Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Would you turn with me to 1 Timothy 6? We did this on Friday night, so a few of the, a few of the folks here were there. They got the preview of this. But in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul um, actually gave some instructions to Timothy. He's writing to Timothy this letter. And he tells him um, things that he wants Timothy to teach to people who are rich. Those who are rich in this world. So I, I kind of can, just from the context of what Paul is sending Timothy to this church at Corinth to remind them of how Paul t- lived his walk. He then tells him in 1 Timothy 6, Timothy, I have some instructions that you need to present to those people who are wealthy in this world. So Timothy probably could have used these very words on the church at Corinth. He says in verse 17, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 6, give you a second to get there, 1 Timothy 6, 17. And Paul says to them, to Timothy, he says, instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but rather fix their hope on God, who richly supplies us with all things, all things to enjoy. Instruct them to do good and to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, storing up for themselves treasures of a good foundation for the future so that they might take hold of that which is life indeed. Paul says, tell the rich people not to fix their hope on the uncertainty. How, I mean, how uncertain are riches? Yeah, can, we, can you lose all your riches in a day? Think about all the people that just went through those hurricanes. You know, the, the islands that were devastated out there. In, 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 just, just south of Florida down that way, in the Caribbean area. I mean, there's whole islands that everything those people had and they didn't have that much to start with. It's gone. Scoured off the face of the earth, thrown out into the ocean. Gone. I mean, gone, gone. And you just go, everything you had, snap, overnight, gone, one storm. How fast can we lose everything we have? I mean, ri- literally. Or how about you lose your health? You have a stroke. Everything that was so important to you, I, I shared this with the kids, you know, you could be into exercise and fitness and you get in an accident and all of a sudden you're paralyzed. You know, I was sitting in my living room while I was telling the kids this. I have my exercise bike I sit on and pedal. You know, the little recumbent style bike. I sit there, I put my Bible there up on the thing and I think, I do that as a, you know, I like to do that as a habit of life. If I was paralyzed from the waist down or the neck down, what would happen to all that all that stuff that you, you know, see, it's, it, you can own it still, but it's not going to mean anything. Take in like that. And that quick, we can lose all the stuff. So putting our hope on the uncertainty of riches, it, it, Paul says, tell the rich people not to do that. Instead, he tells them what to really do with their riches. Take their riches and, and do what with it? Help others. You, you weren't, you know, God did not make people rich in this present world just to lavish it on themselves. If you've been made rich, you are made rich so that you could be rich in good works. So you can help others and be generous and be ready to share with those in need. And, and in so doing, Paul says you'll store up for yourself treasures of a good foundation for the future. Like Jesus said, don't store up yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. Where did Jesus say, put your treasure? In heaven. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. He's telling us, you you need to put your treasure up there. We want to have hearts that are heaven bound, heaven tied, because If we would just put our treasures there, we wouldn't get all stressed out about when our treasure down here comes or goes. 
Because we know we have a, a good, he says, a good treasure with a foundation that is solid. You know, when you put treasure up in heaven, can anyone break in and steal it? Can moss destroy it or rust? See, my pile that I've been working on, this for just for you, for you guys, I don't do this to the girls. Men, I usually do this at men's prayer. Guys, when we get to heaven, you're looking around for Pastor Izzy. You're going, I'm sure you, I thought he was going to be here. Where is he? I don't see him anywhere. You're not looking in the right place. Look for the highest mountain of jewels. I mean, precious, precious things. The biggest, hugest mountain. Like you look way, way, way up there and you go, wow, look at that really, really tall mountain. Look, look it looks like there's a little stick figure on top. Jump up and down and go, woohoo, woohoo, look at my treasure. <laughs> That'll be me. That's how much treasure I want to store up in heaven. I want the biggest pile, bigger than all you guys combined. You go, that's just boastful. No. See, the Bible says I'm supposed to stimulate you to love. Provoke you is another translation. Provoke you to love and to good deeds. And one thing I found is when I tell this to guys at men's prayer, they're like, you ain't going to get a bigger pile than me. I'm going to get a bigger pile than you. Well, I'm going to get a bigger pile than both you guys. If they walk away thinking that, I did my job. I got them to start thinking about putting treasure where they need to. When I get the guys to do this, it's a lot easier on the gals. Because when the guys are got their minds putting the stuff where they need to, then they become rich in good works down here. And that's what, that, the only reason you were ever entrusted with riches is so you could be rich in good works. So you could be generous. Because what's the scripture say in Proverbs? Unto a generous man, the Lord does what? He repays. Whenever you're generous, don't think it isn't going to come back to you. Now, I shared this with the, with, the, with the folks on Friday night. I never share with somebody thinking that I'm going to receive back from that person. Because oftentimes the ones God has you share with are not the ones that you will ever receive back from. They're, you're just a conduit to pour blessing to them. But does that stop the Lord from pouring blessings to you? Does he go, oh man, I can't work this out. It was supposed to be that um, pay it forward thing, uh, but they're going to pay it back. Did, it, did, it, did you see that movie, that pay it forward movie? In the movie, did the people who you paid it forward to, did they always give it back? No, but it, did it come back to the people? Because there's a godly principle in that movie whenever you're generous. And by the way, this doesn't mean Christians only. There are non-Christians that are more generous than Christians. And then Christians get envy. How come they're so blessed? Well, because God says unto a generous man, not a generous Christian man, just a generous man, period. I mean, this works for believers and unbelievers. Unto a generous man, the Lord repays. But some Christians are stingy. They're, they're less generous than the, than the non-Christian. The non-Christian sees his brother in need, and he's like, oh, here, let me help you. And the Christian's like, oh, I'm not doing that. They're not holy. They're, they're not walking uprightly. Where did the Lord say that that was the requirement to show grace? Where, where did he make up this rule? I haven't found it. Did anyone find that rule? See, we're supposed to be the people who are storing up treasure. And I found you scatter, like the scripture says in Ecclesiastes, oh, you scatter liberally on the waters because you don't know where, you cast your bread, it says, on the waters. You don't know where it will come back to you. No, so you just be generous all over the place and watch what God will do. And I want to encourage you guys. That's what we're here to do. We're, you know, and are we rich in this country? I mean, just... Just us sitting here on the beach. Some of you are going, I'm not rich at all, Pastor. I'm, the, I'm like at the lowest tax bracket. I have news for you. You live here in America. Did you drive here today? In a car that you're buying or even have a loan for? You're still richer than 90, what, plus percent of the world? You have a place to sleep? Do you, do you have one of those things at the back of your sink that you turn and, and this water comes out? And, and you can adjust it to hot and cold. I was sharing this on Friday night. I, how many of you have gone on missions to countries where they don't have running water? And you, and you, 
see the people, you know, you have to hike miles to get water and carry it back. And you can't drink the water right away because if you do, you get Montezuma's revenge. And, you know, we are so blessed. We just turn a faucet. My wife and I, we laugh. We, every time we turn the faucet and, and we can adjust the temperature, we're like, thank you, Jesus. I mean, we live in luxury. We have running hot and cold water that you can actually put in your mouth. I've been in countries where you don't do that. You know, you don't drink water from the faucet. You, you don't brush your teeth with it or you'll get sick. And we just, we got it here. We can drink right out straight from the tap. We're blessed. We are rich. And so these words of instruction, I think, apply to us. Be generous. Be generous. We, 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 we really don't... We just need to use what we've been given to store up treasures in heaven. And I don't know about you, but I hope that provokes some of you to go, no way, I'm getting a bigger pile than that pastor. I'm not going to let him get the biggest pile. I want a mountain next to him, bigger than his. Go for it. Let's get, let's get a whole mountain range going. Everybody start putting your treasure upstairs because we don't know how fa It could only take one burp of that mountain and it's all, right? Yeah. Pastor Mike Kessler was talking to me about, hey, I found a piece of property on your island. Maybe I could buy it. It's in this place, Paradise Park something <laughs> south of Hilo. It's really cheap. What do you think? I said, Mike, Auntie Jen lives over there. She was born and raised there. And um, we've been praying fervently for her. And you guys know Jen that drives over. And, uh, and, <laughs> and I'm like, um, the lava was like 500 yards from her house. And we were, we were praying fervently it would not consume her house. And, it, you know, they had to get the kids, get them out of the school there, came right up to the schoolyard and, and is, you know, devouring stuff. And, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly where it is, Mike. He's like, I'll send you the TMK number. You can look it up and... See where it is. And I said, Mike, I'll just ask Auntie Jen where it is. Because, <laughs> like, I know they're selling stuff cheap because the lava's coming right at them right now. He goes, lava? I said, yeah. He, Never mind. <laughs> I said, well, well, we're praying maybe if it's okay with the Lord, you could come over this side, you know, a little closer. But um, I told him we would continue to lift him up. He says he's getting older and he doesn't think he has another winter left in the Idaho, uh, the temperature just snapped, I guess, and went cold. And so, so he's like, I, he, he, he came to Hawaii to cover for Pastor Daryl Skinner over at Calvary Chapel, Pearl Harbor. Is it Pearl? No, Pearl, Pearl, City. Pearl City. Pearl City. And uh, he said that the weather was so um, forgiving on his joints, you know, his arthritis didn't hurt, that when he went back, they had a cold snap and it started snowing. And he's like, what? You know, this is like the end of June and they get a snowfall. And he's like, I don't want to be here. You know, God, can I go to Hawaii? <laughs> so, so I told him we would pray for him. If anyone knows a good deal on this side, <laughs> that we can uh, have him join us. And, uh, and, and just, you know, he's like, if I live here, I have, if I live, say, 10 more years, I get 10 more summers. If I live in Hawaii, you guys have summer every season, spring, winter, <laughs> So I could get four times ten. I could get 40 more summers. I didn't know that he was a, a, a surfer boy when he was younger. And um, he was one of those guys in early Calvary Chapel that got saved. Raul Reese, Greg Glory, those guys running around in the Newport area and uh, going to Calvary Costa Mesa. So we, we actually f we, we started talking. I found out we went to, to the very first pastor's conference together in 1979 at Calvary Costa Mesa. It was like 50 guys total. And that's pastors, youth possible pastors, potential, because I, mean, I wasn't even in the ministry, and they drug me along. The pastor brought me, the youth pastor, saying, we know you have a calling on your life. So you got to go to this meeting with us. And I found out that Mike Kessler was there too. That was his first pastor's conference. And so we didn't know each other. And then later, the Lord put us together to put radio stations throughout the islands of the uh, effect and the CSN. And so I'm really grateful for that man. He's, you know, helped me a lot in, in helping get the gospel out. And now he wants to come here and, and learn how we do YouTube. And I'm like, okay, you're going to, 
He doesn't know how it is out here on the beach. He's thinking, we can live broadcast from the beach in Hawaii. Mm, haven't figured that out yet, Mike, but, you know, who knows? The Lord could do anything. So he wants to do every man an answer from the beach where we, he saw the video. He thinks we could, like, sit over the tree over there, and they could call in and say, how is it? Well, the waves are nice, and uh, whales are jumping, and... And he, and he wants that, yeah, the pastor fantasy, Jan says. <laughs> we can do to every man an answer right over there, or, you know, <laughs> the call-in radio show. Um, who knows? I'm open for anything. Who knows? The Lord really could do anything. But, uh, but just keep him in your prayers, would you? And his wife and, uh, and, their, and their kids that they could, you know, if the Lord wants that, then we're good with that. And we want to see what the Lord will do. So let's pray. Father, thanks so much for these words of exhortation, Lord. Help us, help us to take them to heart. Help us to be generous. Lord, when you put the opportunity in front of us that we can put treasure up in heaven. Lord, I want to truly be used to stir and provoke others to join me in storing up treasure up there, Lord. We know we don't have any certainty for the riches down here, but we're grateful for the ones that we put with you, Lord. No one will be able to take them away from us. And so, Lord, just help us to, to lay hold of that truth and let it sink in deep into our hearts, our minds, that we can truly walk and live that in these days, Lord. A, a, a days of such materialism, Lord, of things down here. We want to be the ones that, that show your materialism towards things upstairs. Lord, that we could just treat things down here as what they are, just things. Lord, let us value people more than things. Help us to be those ones that follow you in that, in that attitude. I ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. May you Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.